Hello and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel. Today I'll be reviewing this Cinecam 85mm 4K HD Cinewoop from Eosheen. When this Eosheen Cinecam Cinewoop arrived at the Worldly Bloke test labs with its 4K Full HD Cadex Tarsier dual sensor camera, I was pretty excited. A few years ago, my first drone, a Taro 680 Pro with a GoPro Hero 4 Black, got me thinking it'd be awesome to have all this 4K fun, but with a tiny drone that you could just quietly buzz around and be uber stealthy. So is this it? Is this the ultimate 4K quad that fits in your hand? So this actually flies pretty well, and the footage in the FPV goggles and the HD footage is actually pretty good. Although it's gonna be really interesting to do a full test on this camera and fathom out which of the modes is best and what the relative field of view is between the two cameras. But Ishin have got this pretty good, to be honest. The tune is surprisingly good. The problem with these small ducted tiny whoops is they suffer quite badly from your wash drop you can't do power loop, you can't do split S's and all those sorts of things and it's difficult to fly. Tuning that out could be quite hard but Eosheen seem to have done a good job on this and it flies pretty well. So here it is, the Eosheen Cinecam 85 Cinewoop and at first glance it looks just like a Mobular 7 HD that's been on a workout. Although that's black and that's red, very similar. And it arrives in this rather nice hard case with some spare props, a 300 milliamp hour HV LiPo battery. You get a spare Tarsier data cable, some tools and manuals, all the usual stuff really. The frame is reasonably stiff for a plastic tiny whoop and importantly it doesn't feel too brittle, it's got some give, which means it's probably not going to snap as quickly as some of the other tiny whoops that are flown. And buried down in here is the Crazy B F4 Pro version 3. This is the new one, all-in-one flight controller that can run on 2 to 4S. Although the frame battery straps here are designed to take 3S. And you can order this with a range of receivers. You can get the FR Sky non-EU, FlySky, TBS Crossfire, and you can order it without a receiver if you want. And I opted for the FR Sky version, which I think is probably the most popular. And the receiver on this also supports telemetry, which is great. And this is very similar to the version 2 of the Crazy BF4, used on loads of other tiny whoops. And it's got the Betaflight OSD and so on. It's going to be interesting to see how this compares. The Crazy BF4 version 2 had a few issues. And on here you've got an onboard 4-in-1 ESC that delivers up to 10 amps continuous and supports D-Shot 600. And it's all BL HeliSuite programmable, which is nice and convenient. And the motors on here are Eshin EX1103, 7000 kV with an open bottom. And there's a welcome return of bolts to hold the props on. I must admit I've grown a bit tired of losing props that have just shot off because they don't fit properly on the shaft of the motor. And as for these props, well I'm not sure what they are. They're not branded and there's nothing in the specs which say what they are so I'll have a bit of hunt around and see if I can find out what these are. But there's going to be a plenty of alternatives. They've got this interesting little feature on the end here which are I think anti-vortex bits, but who knows. And tucked into the top of the canopy, you can just see it under there, is a 25 to 200 milliwatt switchable 40 channel VTX that supports smart audio. So you'll be able to change all your VTX settings using the Betaflight OSD. Again, all very convenient. And poking out the back here, is this simple RG178 dipole antenna. These actually perform pretty good. So apart from the version 3 Crazy Bee, this is all 
pretty much standard fodder for current tiny whoops. But what makes this different is the Cadex Tarsier dual sensor camera. And unlike a Runcam Split or a Cadex Turtle that uses a single sensor and it splits the video between the VTX and the HD DVR, this has got two completely separate sensors. I'll pull this off here. You'll be able to see a bit more clearly. There we go. And the massive benefit of this is you don't need to compromise on your camera settings. With a split, the settings like contrast and brightness and all that sort of stuff, there's a single setting that affects both cameras when you set it up with the standard joystick. And there's a balance to make it work best for both. So setting the FPV image for best flying may not be right for the HD footage. And on here you've got two separate sensors. The top one is HD and the bottom one is the FPV camera. And then there's this little ND filter as well. With the Tarsier you set the FPV camera with this FPV dongle. You've all seen these before. And you just plug that into that connector just down there. And to set the HD camera to change all the settings and format the SD card and all that sort of thing, uh, you chat to this with a CADEX app and that uses Wi-Fi to communicate. And just down here is the Wi-Fi antenna for that board at the bottom. It's just held on with a piece of double-sided foam. And this main HD camera at the top here uses a Sony sensor, a CMOS sensor, that's used on lots of other HD sports cameras. It's got 1200 TV lines and it supports 4K 30 frames per second, 2.7K 60 frames per second and more. And I have to say the FPV image off here is actually quite nice and much better than a turtle or a run cam split. I always think the compromise of the split favours the HD camera and this is a nice change to be able to independently change the two and the performance of the FPV camera is pretty good. The only problem with this dual arrangement is the field of view of each of these cameras is different. So when you fly close to things it looks great in your goggles through the bottom camera but when you look at the HD footage from here it looks just like you're looking at the sky so if you plan to use this for lots of close-up slow cine whoop style filming be careful you'll be looking up too high but I will be doing a full video on the field of view of these cameras a bit later on and I'm not quite sure why this ND8 ND filter covers both lenses there's no real need to use this on the FPV camera. It really doesn't make a lot of sense. Looks pretty cool though. So as I said, I will be doing a full comparison of the FPV and HD footage at various settings in a later video. So there it is. My perfect 4K HD 85mm Cine Whoop. Hmm, well, not quite. There's a few gremlins and annoyances with this that you really need to know about. Now, if you've had a Crazy B F4 V2 on other Tiny Whoop quads with a built-in FR Sky receiver, you'll know that although it supports FR Sky D8 and D16 mode, you can only bind it in D8. And I was sort of hoping that they'd fix this in the new V3 version that we've got on here. But no, it's exactly the same. And this is fine if you're using an international transmitter, but if you're in the UK or EU, D8 mode isn't available on your transmitter as a setup for binding. Fortunately, this is an easy fix and you just need to do a quick firmware change on your Tyrannus. And if you check my video up here, it'll show you how to do that. And the binding on a Crazy BF4 doesn't need you to do that sort of juggling where you have to press the bind button while you apply power, which makes it nice and easy. But where the hell is the bind button? It's 
nowhere to be seen on here. Oh uh, crap. It's actually on the other side of this board. And that's buried deep inside the quad under there. I'm not quite sure what the designers at Crazy Bee or Happy Model were thinking when they were designing this board. If the bind button is on the opposite side of the PCB to the USB connector, it doesn't matter which way you mount this, it's going to be the wrong way round for either the USB or the bind button. So you're going to need to take the canopy and the stack apart to get to the bind button, which is really annoying. But the reality of it is that you don't bind very often, I guess. But for a newbie, buying this bind and fly quad, it's a bit daunting. The skimpy little manual here that we expect with this doesn't mention any of that, of course. And I'll be doing a full setup video that will cover the complete setup of this step by step. Now, the next problem is the SD card for the Tarsia DVR. Don't go thinking that you can just plug any old SD card in this slot and hit the record button and where you go. The Tarsia is really finicky about the type of SD card that you're going to use and how it's formatted. First off, it needs at least a U3 SD card to cope with the high bit rate or data transfer rate for 4K. Make sure that you use a SanDisk U3 or similar, not some cheap no-name brand. The chances are it just won't work. Also, you're going to fill up cards pretty fast at 4K, so make sure you get something that's at least 32 gig. And you will need to format this as FAT32 with 64K block size, or the app will just barf and say there's no SD card. You can't format FAT32 on anything over 16 gig, so you will need to use a third party app called GUI Format, and there's others that do it. They're free and they just work. And don't even think about trying to use a Mac to format as FAT32. I've tried it and really, it just doesn't work. So let's just check out my maiden flight. But my experience with the Crazy Bee F4 V2 has made me uber cautious with these flight controllers. The quality control is well known to be a bit patchy. Some batches work great and others were just junk. So I'm going to have a gentle cruise around just to see that everything looks fine. But it's just fail safe a few tens of meters away. So I'm going to give it another go. Here we go. Just to check I wasn't being a donkey. And there it goes, maybe 40 metres out, it's fail safe again. So this seems to have similar problems to the V3 version that has the integrated FR Sky receiver, which I found would fail safe randomly. Sometimes close, sometimes far away. Just to complete the maiden, I had a quick bat around, staying very close, mainly just to see how it flies. And actually, it mostly doesn't suffer from your wash problem like other tiny whoops. I'm not trying to fly smoothly here, but I'm being quite aggressive in the turns. And there's a small amount of your wash on a fast level turn, and you can see that the quad just dips down. But it's not too bad. There's some prop wash as well, but nothing that I couldn't fly around or probably tune out. Power loops and split S's are okay as well. And that's where most ducted tiny whoops suffer. And this is pretty good. It needs a little bit of work. Disappointing. Now, it'd be unfair of me to criticise this based on the FR Sky compatible receiver, the built in one. But I did have random fail safes on my Mobula 7 HD, as I said. It may be fine with FlySky or TBS Crossfire as the built in receiver option. Who knows? Let me know in the comments if you've got those and how those options work. Before I test this any further, I just don't trust the receiver, so I'm going to fit an XM Plus 
or an XSR receiver in here and I'll also be adding a buzzer because on one of those fail safes it took me about 10 minutes to find this in the grass. So is this the ultimate 4K HD Tiny Whoop? Well obviously no but there is a lot of promise here. I really want to see how the different HD formats work and whether things like 4x3 and 16x9 is just stretched and cropped and if I can get the tune a bit better. And I'm slightly disappointed and encouraged all at the same by this. Watch out for the next video where I'll go through a step-by-step -step setup and show you how I fit a different receiver and the buzzer. As usual, thanks for watching and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please consider subscribing to the channel for updates. I'll see you next time.